Before you is a picture of the original Brown Dog Memorial. It was a bronze drinking fountain erected in memory of an anonymous London mongrel, but it became a national cause celeb in Edwardian Britain and a focus for alternative politicians of the era. It spent a large part of its short life under 24-hour police guard. It was unveiled in 1906 to commemorate a dog killed by animal experimenters at the University of London. In this picture you can see the vivisector experimenting on the brown dog. The poor dog was experimented on more than once and its agonies would have been unreported if it hadn't been for two female Swedish medical students. Lind Afhagerby on the left and Miss Chateau on the right. Both women witnessed firsthand the experiment being performed at London University and then brought it to the attention of the public via a book called Shambles of Science or as it was subtitled Extracts from the Diary of Two Students of Physiology. The man in the middle is Stephen Coldridge, a barrister and an honorary secretary of the National Anti-Vivisection Society. He helped publicise the testimonies of the two Swedish medical students and unfortunately ended up being sued for libel by the vivisector concerned in the brown dog experiment. His name was Dr William Baileys. Dr William Baileys won his libel case against Stephen Coldridge and Stephen Coldridge had to pay £2,000 fine plus £3,000 costs which in today's money is around £250,000. However, thanks to the Daily News opening a special brown dog fund, the 5000 or £250,000 by today's money, was easily recouped. In fact, the fund, via generous donations from the public, eventually raised over £5,700. The publicity around the case may have ended at this juncture, but for a woman called Louise Woodward, who was Honorary Secretary to the International Anti-Vivisection Society. Louise Woodward had the bright idea of creating a permanent memorial to the brown dog. Unveiled in 1906, the monument was loathed by the establishment immediately. This just wasn't for its bald-faced anti-vivisectionist inscription, but also for its capacity to act as a rallying point for political activists from a whole host of different movements. These included suffragettes, trade unionists, socialists, Marxists, liberals, leading figures in the temperance movement, and all kinds of mavericks flocked to its defence. But crucially, many local people in Battersea adopted it as their own. Members of the medical establishment in particular grew to hate this provocative bronze dog for the scorn it poured over their profession. When orthodox attempts to remove the memorial came to nothing, medical students and their supporters tried to smash the dog under the cover of darkness. Later, the medical students took violently to the streets in what became known as the Brown Dog Riots. Newspapers gorged themselves on this controversy. There were endless public meetings to discuss the memorial's legitimacy and questions were even asked in Parliament. In the end, however, the brown dog's fate rested not with national politicians but with the local council, which eventually pulled the monument down in the dead of night. The anti-vivisectionists were enraged by this council decision and thousands of them protested in Trafalgar Square. However, sadly, they weren't successful in getting the Brown Dog Memorial restored. However, in 1985, after 75 years, a Labour-controlled Greater London Council, which owned Battersea Park, and with the permission of a Conservative-controlled Wandsworth Council, the green light was given to erect a new Brown Dog Memorial. I first went to the Brown Dog Memorial in the year 2000 for the National Anti-Vivisection Society's Unlock the Labs campaign, which called for freedom of information on animal experiments and the right to challenge them before they are conducted. 
The celebrities there that day were Ken Livingston, Jenny Seagrove and Alexis Sale. So why was I at the Brown Dog Memorial last week taking photographs of Brian May? The answer was to promote the Green Party's animal policy for the London mayoral and assembly elections in 2012. I'd like to dedicate this video to Louise Lynn Aff Hagaby, seen here with Lord Dowding in 1963.